Nintendo fans have been practically begging for a new Metroid game that isn't a 3DS co-op game. When you get a chance to play this 2002 GameCube classic, it becomes clear as to why. This is Metroid Prime. Now to be clear, this is actually part 1 out of 3 for my review of Metroid Prime Trilogy. See, after Retro made 3 Metroid Prime games, 2 for the GameCube and 1 for the Wii, they later brought all 3 of them together for a Wii package. Graphics were slightly upgraded, controls were mapped to the Wii Remote and nunchuck buttons, pointer and motion controls, and the 3 games in one package was released at a pretty high price. Luckily I managed to buy the whole trilogy from the Wii U eShop for about 20 bucks. But enough history, let's dive right into this first game. The story starts with space bounty hunter Samus responding to a distress signal from a ship orbiting Talon 4. After her investigation finds no survivors, she also finds that her old foe Ridley is out for some destruction once again. I remember you, scumbag. Samus chases Ridley down to the planet. Now on the planet, you as Samus must explore the area, uncover the mysteries, and most importantly, survive. As you play, you do find more details that bring further depth to the story, which is actually rather interesting. In 2002, these were some of the most impressive visuals out there, and through a modern lens, the graphics have held up surprisingly well. Retro really knew what they were doing with the visual presentation. Sure, you can occasionally spot some early 2000s blockiness and muddy textures, but most of the time the game just looks great. Good lighting, well-designed levels, and some certain characters and effects having great polish. With the sound design, some interesting choices were made. Voice acting in the game is almost non-existent save for sounds of Samus getting hurt, creatures attacking you, and your scanner reading information to you. The rest of the sound work is on the sound effects and music, all of which add to this dark, sci-fi universe where just about every character is an alien out for blood. Your blood. At first glance, this game looks like a first-person shooter, but it's actually more of a mix of first-person shooting, exploration, platforming, and adventure game with puzzles. Remarkably, Retro Studios brought all of these elements together very effectively. Blasting enemies is intense, platforming is fun, the puzzles are challenging, and exploring this planet really brings it to life. As you explore, you're meant to scan any enemies and objects you can to know how to beat an enemy or solve a puzzle, sometimes even just to learn more about the game's expansive lore. You'll also notice that Samus has no backup here. You're isolated in this strange and hostile environment that may have once been a flourishing paradise. Now it's been overrun by wicked aliens that have really good variety. From creatures that appear from underground or fly from nests, to creatures of ice, fire serpents, and so on, you'll never get bored with all the different enemy types, some of which have very specific weaknesses too. And in order to exploit these weaknesses and solve the later puzzles, you'll be unlocking new abilities and tools as you play, and each ability is used creatively in combat and or puzzle solving. The Morth Ball alone has a large list of uses in reaching new areas and solving puzzles, and since this game isn't linear, unlocking new abilities results in you returning to previously explored rooms to reach something you couldn't previously. So yes, there is some backtracking in this game, and unfortunately not much in the way of fast travel. I mean, this is still mostly made up of corridors and rooms. But there is a constant need for strategy in this game. Even though the game does do a good job of preventing slow points by spawning enemies in a lot of areas, you do still have to think about how to use all of your abilities effectively. Sometimes that means searching for a power conduit with your heat vision visor, or blasting something with a specific blast type or missile. This really came into play with the space pirates I fought that could only be killed by specific blaster types. These guys were ruthless. I was actually surviving pretty well at one point, until they appeared in teams and slaughtered me. This all makes the game feel more like a thinking person's game, rather than a simplistic sci-fi shooter. One very compelling experience is the boss fights. Each element-based area, ice, fire, desert, etc., has some badass bosses to face, many of them requiring a quick scan as early as possible to figure out how to defeat them. But even with the scanner spilling some boss secrets, the bosses remain tough challenges. I actually found many of them slightly more difficult than the average Zelda game bosses. Like other enemies, their strengths and weaknesses are specific and unique, not to mention the speed and brutality of some of them. You don't know how happy I was that I took the time to find energy boosters for more health before facing some of these bosses. As previously mentioned, this is the Wii version, part of the trilogy package. Retro Studios thankfully kept motion controls down to areas where they made sense. The pointer for Samus' arm cannon makes aiming at enemies to shoot and objects to scan a great touch of immersion, and surprisingly so does using your nunchuck to throw your grapple line. The rest of the controls are still buttons and the nunchuck's analog stick, so anyone who played the GameCube original should be able to adjust easily to this control scheme. While I've never played the original GameCube version, I can say that Metroid Prime is a fantastic game. It makes sense why Metroid has a fanbase crying out for another game like this. It represents a smooth transition for Samus from 2D to 3D. Is the sequel just as good? Stay tuned for part 2 of my Metroid Prime trilogy review to find out. 
Until then, check out my previous review of Geist for the GameCube. See you all next time!